My name is Alberto Sonino from University College London, and I'm going to present you Chainspace, our new sharded smart contract system. It's a joint work with Mustafa, Bano, George from UCL, and Dave from Constructive Proofs. So, people love blockchains as they are now, but I have two main problems. First, they are slow, in the sense that I can only process a very uh, little amount of transactions per second. The second one is that they scale badly, as previous keynote explained it, which means that no matter how many computers you had or how many har uh, hardware that you are going to add to the blockchain, you will never be able to process more transactions per second. And these problems became a reality with the crypto kittens problems that we had uh, a couple of time ago, when people tried to execute a lot of transactions on Ethereum, while Ethereum couldn't scale and couldn't process transactions at that speed. And that created a big congestion problem. The second problem with current um, blockchain and smart contract system is that it's very hard to operate on secrets or private inputs because everything is recorded in public on the blockchain and because inputs of the smart contracts goes public on the chain as well. And so here are a couple of related works that try to address uh, the, the former problem. So some try to be a smart contract platform that are scalable and that allow privacy, but none of them really manage to have all of them at the same time. So here is where Chainspace comes in. Chainspace uh, provides a scalable smart contract platform and that supports privacy. These are the two main contributions of our paper. So um, this is the outline of the talk. I will quickly start with a brief introduction of the system. I will be very general without deep technical uh, details uh, just to give you the necessary uh, to understand the rest of the talk. So in chain space, everything is an object. So imagine that you have a bank account, for instance. Your bank account will be represented as an object in chain space. This object will have several attributes, like a balance, uh, the owner, maybe a name, and any other information associated with a bank account. Then, this object can be used only once. Once you use them inside a smart contract, they become invalidated and cannot be used again. So, for instance, imagine that I have my object representing my bank account and I receive a coin transfer. What the contract will do, what Chainspace will do, it will destroy my bank account and create a new object representing my new bank account with the updated balance. Also, another point in Chainspace is that nodes are organized into shards. So shards are just a collection of nodes, and its shards, so its node in the shards, are responsible to keep the state of this object. So to keep track of my updated bank account, which is an object active, my old bank account, which is now inactive, and so on. So how do we reach scalability in chain space, and how do we reach consensus? We came out with a new protocol called SBAC, which is a mix between a Byzantine agreement and atomic commits. So uh, the idea of Byzantine uh, agreement is a protocol coming from the 90s that allows some subset of nodes to be malicious or corrupted. And atomic commits simply means that the transaction atomically is uh, submitted atomically. So um, to take an easy example, let's imagine that we have a transaction, so a smart contract, taking as input two objects, for instance, two bank accounts, and that creates a third object as output as a result of the execution of the contract. First, the user will send the transaction to shard one and shard two, let's say the two shards managing the two input objects. Then these two shards will lock the objects in question. So it means that no other contract can come and ask to use that object uh, for another contract. They will run internally, so each shard independently, a BFT agreement to vote or to decide and reach consensus on uh, on whether or not the transaction should be accepted. If one of them decides to abort, it will they will send it to the other shards. The object is then unlocked, it becomes active again and is available again, and the transaction stops here. If the, every shard tells that the transaction should go through, and so we should continue, then the object is unlocked and becomes invalidated, the result is broadcasted to the third shard responsible of creating a new object and the feedback is sent to the user. So there is two main insights on why these protocols allow for scalability. The first one is to know that only the nodes responsible uh, inside shard one and shard two, so only the node 
concerned by the transaction on O2 and O1 will actually reach consensus and be included, will do the work. So there can be other nodes, uh, like another, another thousand number of nodes or many other shards that are not concerned by that transaction and that are therefore not concerned in the, in the consensus and can do other transactions in that time. The second one is, as you can see, shard one and shard two can work their BFT consensus in parallel. These are the two ideas why the system scales. So um, for privacy, uh, very quickly, uh, just an overview on how traditional smart contract platform works um, and why it's hard to have privacy into those. So imagine that on the user side, so on the left, we have some inputs, let's say some private inputs. Then he submits these inputs to the nodes. The nodes will take the previous state of the chain, the inputs, and execute the code on the smart contract to have the updated states of the chain. So everything is in public, everything goes through the nodes so everyone can see them. In chain space, we introduce a distinction between the contracts. So we have two parts of the code in the smart contract. The part that defines the execution, as in traditional smart contracts, and the part of the contract, so another function, that tells how the execution should be checked. So that tells how to verify the execution of the smart contract. This will become clear in a second. So on the user side in chain space, the user will himself take the, out, the, the input object, so the previous state of the, of the smart contract, take his private inputs, and execute himself, let's say in his browser, the execution part of the contract. So he will execute the contract himself and create some output state. Then he will send the previous state, so my previous bank account, and the one, the output object with my updated balance to the node, which will just run the checker part of the contract and verify that everything works fine. And that's how we can tell without re-executing the code if it works or not. So um, how privacy works here um, with an easy example. Um, imagine that we have a simple smart contract that just want to do a, a digital signature. So how would it work? We have as inputs our private signing key and the execution part of the code would just be the code telling to sign a particular statement. The user will take those, execute the digital signature in his browser, and then send the signature and not the private key, so not the signing key, to the node. The node check the code on the checker to, to know how he should verify that particular smart contract. And that's how it works. So the general philosophy here is that we never send public data on the blockchain. We only send encryption. So we generate this encrypted data on the user side, and the execution part of the contract tells also how to generate zero knowledge proofs asserting the correctness of this encryption. So at the end of the day, only encrypted or committed data will go to the chain along with zero knowledge proofs asserting the correctness of, this, uh, of these encryptions. And the nodes will run either the verifying part of the proofs to verify them or whatever code is specified by the smart contract. So chain space comes with a set of uh, property, security properties on two different threat models. The first is the honest shard threat model, where we consider a set of 3F plus 1 nodes as in classic Byzantine settings. We say also in the first threat model that at most F can be malicious. The second threat model is what happens is more than F nodes are dishonest. So let's say the whole shard is dishonest. Then we have the first property is transparency, which states that anyone can authenticate the history of transactions of the, of the blockchain. That's also a classic one. It helps on the both threat models. The second one, encapsulation, says that a smart contract cannot interfere with objects created by another smart contract. Let's say that we have that smart contract that does CryptoKittens, then CryptoKittens will be uh, represented as objects. The CryptoKitten contact will not be able to interfere with the bank account contract. The third one is integrity, which only holds on the honest sharded model that says that only valid and non-conflicting transaction should go through. And finally, non-repudiation. Even if there is misbehavior, we can detect it and, pin out and point out the faulty parts. So um, for the performance analysis, what did we do? We implemented our system on uh, AWS. We tested and measured uh, on that platform. We implemented our SBAC protocol in Java uh, based on BFT Smart. And we implemented uh, a Python contract simulator 
um, which is a platform where smart contract developer can write, test, deploy, and verify the smart contract without having to run um, the full ledger and deploy the full system. And finally, we released our code as open source on GitHub slash Chainspace. So um, these are the main results we obtained from our evaluation. We see that on the first graph here, that the number of transactions per second that can be processed on Chainspace grows with the number of shards linearly. So it means this is the graph that proves scalability. In other systems, we would expect to have that the number of transactions per second doesn't grow with, more, with the addition of, of new hard, uh, hardware or addition of new computer and new nodes. Here we see that the more shards we have, the more transactions per second we can achieve. The second one, um, I see I don't have much time left, so I will just go through, but everything is explained in the, in the paper. We'll show the behavior, so the number of transactions per second and how it behaves when the size of the shards increases. So um, we can imagine that it will uh, slowly decrease, and this is due to the fact that BFT, the Byzantine protocol inside the shards, will take longer. Also here, how the throughput, the number of transactions per second varies in function to the number of inputs. It also decreases and then flattens out. This is due to the fact that um, the more input we have, the more inter-shard communication, inter -shard communication we will have to. Finally, this graph also represents some main results of chain space, is the trade-off between latency and throughput. So we see here that even when the chain space platform is loaded with 200 transactions per second, which is quite a lot for a smart contract platform, 50% uh, of our client will still hear back from their transaction within a second. This number is particularly big with respect to Ethereum, which can manage around seven transactions per second. Also, in the paper, we have more details about cross shard, um, the cross-shard protocol, how it works, um, more details, and we implemented a number of applications like smart metering, um, platform for decision making, and we benchmark in more details the system. So if you're interested, uh, you can check it out on the paper. Some future work, uh, if you have any input on these, uh, please come talk to me offline after how to recover from malicious shards, so we can detect them, but it's an open, an open question on how can we recover from them. Then, how can smart contract creator avoid these honest shards? How to configure shards, so how can we bootstrap the system? How can we tell this particular set of nodes should create these particular shards there? And how to incentivize the nodes? So finally, two main contributions. We have Chainspace as a scalable smart contract platform, and that supports privacy. The main takeaways are we sharding enables for scalability and the difference between checker and executions is what allows to have privacy. Thank you for your attention. Hey, uh, Greg Cusack, University of Colorado Boulder. Uh, great work. Uh, I was just wondering, uh, how, I guess maybe you talked about this and you're gonna do this in future work. How do you uh, decide uh, your sharding protocol? So how are you dividing up your nodes? And then once you have nodes and shards, uh, how do you, like, do you have a group, do you have a shard leader communicating the consensus? And if so, how do you choose that group leader? Um, so um, the question, one of the questions here is how do we choose which okay. node goes into which shard? It's one of our future work. Okay. We're thinking about it. I'm happy to talk about that mm -hmm. offline. So the inter-shard inter protocol, um, it's a little bit more complex, but it's described in the paper. So it, mm -hmm. it's based on atomic commits. Um, I mean, um, I'm happy to chat it okay. also offline. It's in the paper anyway. Awesome. Thank you. Similar to the uh, the previous question, uh, so so you basically you're running BFT within the shards. Exactly within shards. Okay, then uh, uh, I mean, as far as I know, BFT is like they require a static network configurations, and how do you guarantee that in the shards? And they need mutual authentication with or within the nodes. Uh, I mean, among the nodes. Uh, sorry, can you repeat? Uh, I mean, BFT they require the network setting to be static. And uh, uh, they, uh, because maybe uh, I didn't uh, follow uh, how you defined the shards, how, how you decide yeah. which nodes are. Uh, so, uh, and, and also the nodes in the shards, they have to uh, mutually authenticate with each other. 
So uh, for, for, for this part, maybe I'm missing some point uh, from your presentation. Could oh, you yes. Um, so uh, part of it is described on the paper as well. So uh, what we use for our testing or benchmark, uh, we have a static uh, mapping of nodes to shards. So they authenticate themselves through signatures, but which we suppose are known in advance. But also, I think this is also part of the question on how to bootstrap the system. Okay. Because so, this would be a major yeah. problem that we are working on as well. But you are targeting for public blockchain or private blockchain? So that's a good question. Uh, it will be for um, uh, public. Okay. Thank you very much. take things in uh, uh, isolation, meaning that you are just like, you know, evaluating uh, your, your system. Yeah. And you are, you know, uh, stating that, like, you know, uh, compared to other systems, uh, they would, like, you know, have a different uh, uh, performance. Do you compare that in reality or just like a gut feeling? Uh, no, so uh, the, the, fa the fact that we're trying to do here um, is first scalability. So it is the, the real thing that we're trying to evaluate. So as far as we know, there aren't many people that trying to reach scalability through sharding. OmniLedger is one of them, but it's not a smart contract platform. So it only does payments. It's a very different story as well. And um, alas, uh, RS Coins also works, but it's also a different, it's not smart contract neither, and it has a completely different threat model. So um, we don't really compare against other systems uh, except OmniLedger, but it's also on the paper.